Good Day People of God is Pastor Jeremiah, also known as Pastor Loic, who like to hear the word of God for the week. But before we do so, let us start with a word of prayer. So reverence to our Heavenly Father, our God, let us bow our head and let us pray. Blessed and wonderful Father, exalted King, the only true God, Yahweh, thank you for this new opportunity that you have given unto us to find ourselves in your presence. We humble ourselves and we surrender, therefore, our body, soul, and spirit, the air, the atmosphere, our mind and heart, and everything around us and in us, we surrender everything into your mighty hands. And we pray, blessed for our wonderful Father, asking for your mercy, praying that you forgive us for whatever we may have done, said or thought that did not honor or glorify you, and that you purify and sanctify us with the water of purification of your blood, and that you purge your conscience from any dead, any dead works, that we be able to serve you as we ought to in the name of Jesus Christ. And we stand against anything that oppose itself against the revelation of your truth. Any power of darkness, any principality of the kingdom of darkness, any wicked spirit in high places, any rulers of the darkness of this world, we bind them and cast them into the pit of faith in the name of Jesus Christ. And we proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We ask you, may you take us deeper into the understanding and the revelation of your mystery containing your word. Empower us with truth, knowledge, and wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. We ask for your spirit to move in our midst, to move in our life, even as he was moving upon the face of the deep at the beginning, in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you. Receive all the glory, honor, and praise forever and ever, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we take our main passage of the Holy Scripture in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to verse 16. So reading the word of God in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7 to verse 16 in the name of Jesus Christ. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he says, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Of the earth, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things, and gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry and for the defying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men, and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, makes increase of the body unto the defying of itself in love. May the Lord bless his word, may it come full of understanding, Revelation, grace, life, and blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we continue in our main theme about the fivefold ministries. And for this week in particular, we will be speaking about the ministry of pastor or the pastoral ministry. So the teaching for this week is the pastoral ministry or the ministry of pastor. The term pastor comes from the Latin word pastore, which means shepherd, and is derived from the verb pacere, which signifies to lead to pasture, to set grazing, to cause to eat, or to feed. 
Hence, a pastor is a shepherd of the flock. And in this case, the flock refers to the members of the local church upon which the pastor is responsible. And the role of the pastor is to take care of all the members of the local church by feeding them with the proper spiritual food, which is the word of God, so that the church member can grow spiritually by knowing and understanding the word of God, which, sem- which implies that they are putting the word of God in practice. And as they do so, the church member would therefore grow in their relationship with God the Father. The main difference between a pastor and an an apostle is that the pastor is responsible for for a particular church, for a particular local church, whereas an apostle is responsible of many local churches. Hence, the apostle is regularly moving from one local church to another local church, whereas the pastor is operating at a particular local church. When we look at the normal shepherd, at at the normal shepherd of the sheep, we will always he will always make sure to find food for the sheep by leading them to green or good pastures. And the good shepherd will also lead his sheep. To streams of waters. This means that sheep only need two things green grass, in other words, good pastures, and water. Thus, true church members only need two things green pasture and water. And what does this actually mean? The green grass has solar energy in the form of chlorophyll, which is obtained through the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants use sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide to create oxygen and energy in the form of sugar. Photosynthesis is a system of biological processes by which photosynthetic organisms such as plants, algae, and cyanobacteria convert light energy typically from sunlight into the chemical energy necessary to fuel their everyday activities. And we know that Jesus Christ is called the son of the son of righteousness even as mentioned in the book of Malachi Malachi chapter 4 verse 2. But unto you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness arise here referring to Jesus Christ with healing in his wings and you shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stone and God also referred himself as the fountain of living waters even as stated in the book of Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 13 which says for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and who them out citizens, broken citizens that can hold no water. All this implies that the role of a pastor knowing that Jesus Christ, the, 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 the sheep only needs green herbs and water. And Jesus Christ is called what? The son of of righteousness and the living world knowing that the green herbs produce energy through the, the in the form of the sun the light of the sun from from the light of the sun so all this implies that the role of a pastor is to give to the sheep food that has energy this implies that a pastor is meant to feed the members of his local church with teachings of the word of god that contain a spiritual energy which will enable the church members to grow closer to god but also to function as christian in their daily life these are teachings that 
when church members hear them they can truly feel Jesus Christ meaning they feel they can truly feel that these are teaching directly inspired by the Lord Jesus Christ himself through his Holy Spirit these are teachings that communicate life to the church members who hear them so that they can move forward in their life even when they are facing adversity for they will know what to do in the midst of troubles and this is why the word of God declares this Jesus Christ speaking in John chapter 7 verse 37 to 38 he said if any man first let him come unto me and drink he that believes on me as the scripture says as the scripture has said out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water John chapter 10 verse 10 Jesus Christ again speaking the second part of the verse he said I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly hence a pastor should not teach anything that is outside Jesus Christ a pastor must teach his church members things that relate to Christ things that portray the life of Jesus Christ so that the church members portray the very same life of Christ in them and this is what makes a good pastor Daniel put himself in a regime in the regime of a sheep by requesting that Anania Mishael and Azariah and himself be fed with vegetables to eat and water to drink even as described in the book of Daniel Daniel chapter 1 verse 12 verse 15 and verse 17 to verse 20 it says please test your servant for 10 days and let them give us vegetable to eat and water to drink verse 15 and at the end of the 10 days the future appear better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king delicacies verse 17 as for these four young men God gave them knowledge and skills and in all literature and wisdom and Daniel and had understanding in all vision and dreams now at the end of the 10 days when the king had said that they should be brought in the chief of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar then the king interviewed them and among them all none was found like Daniel Ananiah Mishael and Azariah therefore they served before the king and in all manner of wisdom and understanding about which the king examined them he found them ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers who were in all his realm we can notice that as a result of the fact that Daniel Ananiah Mishael and Azariah were on a sheep diet meaning they were eating and drinking what is appropriate for a sheep they were healthier than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's delicacies and they were found ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers of the entire kingdom of Babylon in all matter of wisdom and understanding and we know that Babylon is a representation of the world this therefore is to say that when your pastor feeds you according to the appropriate regime of a or appropriate diet of a sheep of the flock of Jesus Christ you will end up being ten times better than all the people of the world in all matter of wisdom and understanding you will be healthier spiritually than all of them and when your pastor feeds you with teaching of the Word of God that are inspired by the Holy Spirit you will be ten times better than the people of the world in all matter of wisdom and understanding and you will be healthier spiritually than all of them you will be ten times better than sorcerer than any other agent of the kingdom of darkness in all matter of wisdom and understanding and you will be healthier spiritually than all of them and we can also recall that because Daniel was able to interpret the dream of King Nebuchadnezzar something that no one else was able to do thus Daniel was promoted ruler of the entire province of Babylon and he was also made the chief administrator of all the wise men of Babylon even as stated in the book of Daniel Daniel chapter 2 verse 48 which says then the king promoted Daniel and gave him many great gifts 
and he made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and chief administrator over all the wise men of Babylon. And we know that this ability to interpret dreams was given to Daniel by God when Daniel was on the diet of a sheep. This is again revealing unto us that as your pastor feeds you with teachings of the word of God that are inspired by the Holy Spirit, you will receive spiritual abilities that will enable you to rule spiritually. But this, ability, this spiritual ability will also enable you to be promoted in the physical realm, whether in your professional career or in the society or even financially as it was the case with Daniel. And moreover, because Anania, Mishael, and Azariah, also known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, were on a diet of a sheep, they were bold enough in their faith in God to refuse to sin against God when King Nebuchadnezzar commanded them to worship the golden image that he had set up and they categorically refused to commit this act of idolatry even through, even though their life were at stake. Daniel chapter 3 verse 16 to 18 which says, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If that is the case, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us from your hand, O king. But if not, let it be known to you, O king, that we do not serve your God and nor, nor will we worship the golden image which you have set up. This thus, thus implies that when your pastor feeds you with teaching of the word of God that is inspired by the Holy Spirit, you will have enough faith to refuse to fall into sin despite all the pressure of life and the various persecution. And because of your faith and faithfulness to trust God despite the difficulties you may be going through, God will turn your situation in your favor to the point that people around you and those who will hear about your story will come to believe in God because of your testimony, even as it was the case with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Daniel chapter 3 verse 28 to 30 says, Then Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servant that trusted in him and gave change and, and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. Therefore I make a decree that every people, nation and, and language who speak against thing, uh, uh, who speak anything amiss against the, the god of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego shall be cut into pieces and their house shall be made a dunghill because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Then the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. All this reveals unto us how it is crucial that the teaching of the word of God that your pastor feeds you with be really inspired by the Holy Spirit. And for any teaching of the word of God to be inspired by the Holy Spirit, the pastor needs to be genuinely connected to God by spending enough time in the presence of God through daily prayers and meditation of the word of God. For God is his word, even as the book of John declares in John chapter 1 verse 1, he says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Thus, a good pastor is someone who has deep intimacy with God so that God can inspire him through his Holy Spirit with knowledge and understanding in order for the pastor to be well equipped to feed the church members. And this is why Jesus Christ said in John chapter 14 verse 26, But the Comforter, who is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Thus, such a pastor is therefore a man according to the heart of God. Even as God spoke through the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 15, which says, And I will give you pastors according to my heart, 
who shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Remember, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and Daniel were given and power with knowledge and understanding. And this is the case of David, who was considered to be the shepherd of the people of Israel, being the king of Israel. And God said the following about David, David chapter 13, verse 22. And he said, And when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be the king, to whom also God gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who, will, who shall fulfill all my will. So a good pastor is a man after God's own heart. A pastor who loves spending time in the presence of God through prayer meditation of the word of God is a man after the heart of God. A man that fulfills the will of God. And as the king of Israel, David was a good shepherd for the people of Israel. He was a man according to God's own heart. Because King David loved to spend time in the presence of God, seeking God in prayer and in the meditation of the Word of God. Even as the book of Psalm mentioned, Psalm 27 verse 8, this is King David speaking, he said, When you say, seek you my face, my heart said unto you, your face, Lord, will I seek. Psalm 119 verse 10 and verse 97, it says, With my whole heart, have I sought you? This is David speaking. Oh, let me not wander from your commencement. In other words, let me not wander from your word. Let me not depart from your word. Verse 97, he said, How, oh, how I love your Lord. You know, how I love your word. It is my meditation all the day. These are therefore the signs of a good pastor. A man who loves spending time in the presence of God through daily prayers and the meditation of the word of God so that he can receive inspiration from God through the Holy Spirit to provide appropriate teachings of the word of God for the church members in order for the sheep. And this is why the book of Psalms say in Psalm 23 verse 1 to 3 which says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. And a shepherd should will usually a shepherd will usually have a rod or stick, which he will often use to chase away dangerous animals from the sheep. And this rod or stick is a representation of the ministry. This means that the role of a pastor is also to protect the church members by properly exercising his ministry. And this is well portrayed also in the Psalm 23 of King David, in Psalm 23 verse 4, which says, Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your road and your staff, they comfort me. In other words, because you exercise your ministry, I am not afraid. Because you exercise your ministry, I am comforted. Because you exercise your ministry, I am secure. Hence, when a pastor sees a sheep, meaning a church member, he should not see someone that he must feed the word of God. I repeat, when a pastor sees a sheep, meaning a church member, he should see someone that he must feed the word of God that is inspired by the Holy Spirit. He must see someone that needs to that he needs to take care of by uh, he needs to take care of spiritually by giving good teaching and by monitoring the spiritual growth of the person. The pastor must not see the church member as a person that he can take advantage materially or financially. Thus, when the pastor sees a church member, he must not see or he, he must not look at the social status or rank of the person or how well off is the person. But the pastor should focus on how he, he makes the person to get closer and closer to God, on Heavenly Father. The pastor should see in the person someone that he needs to make sure that the soul is saved and remains saved. And this is why Jesus Christ say, he, Jesus Christ said to be the shepherd of our soul. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 25, he says, For you were a sheep going astray, 
but are now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. Referring to Jesus Christ. Therefore, Jesus is the shepherd and the bishop of our soul. A pastor is therefore someone upon whom a local church is built. Even as Jesus Christ said to Peter in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, he said, And I say unto you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against him. A pastor will thus take good care of the church members of his local church or of the members of this local church by properly feeding them with the good teaching of the word of God simply because he truly loves the Lord Jesus Christ and not because of the social or financial status of the church members and this is why Jesus Christ said the following to Peter in John chapter 21 verse 15 to 17 he said so when they had died Jesus said to Peter Peter Simon so Peter Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me more than this? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, Feed my legs. He said to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. And he said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, do you love me? And he said unto him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Thus the love for the Lord Jesus Christ is what causes a pastor to properly take care of the believers that Jesus Christ would have entrusted unto him in his local church. And in order for the pastor to love the Lord Jesus Christ, he must not be a hireling, even as Jesus Christ mentioned, in John chapter 10 verse 1 to 5 and verse 11 to 16 he says verse John chapter 10 verse 1 to 5 he says very very I say unto you he that entered not by the door into the sheepfold but climbs up some other way the same is a thief and a robber but he that enter in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep to him the porter opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out and when he puts forth his own sheep he goes before them and the sheep follow him and they know his voice for they know his voice and a stranger will then not follow but will flee from him for they know not the voice of strangers verse 11 and 2 to 16 he says i am the good shepherd the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep but he that is a hireling and not the shepherd whose own sheep are not, sees the sheep. He, he sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. And the hireling flees because he is a hireling and cares not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And... I lay down my life for the sheep. No, I sacrifice my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Yes. A pastor who is a highly cannot care for the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because... A hireling is a hired servant. The French version, I mean the Louis II version, used the word mercenary. For by using the word mercenary, we can better understand what, why a pastor who is a hireling cannot take care of the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because a mercenary is paid to fight a war between two countries, for instance. But it does not belong to any of the two countries. Hence, money is what motivates the mercenary to fight. And this means that the country that offers the most money, the mercenary will therefore be fighting for such a country, even to the point of changing side in the middle of the war, for a mercenary only has loyalty to money, meaning the person who offers more money, the mercenary will be loyal to. Thus, 
the mercenary does not care about the citizens of the countries involved in the war, but he cares only about money. Hence, through these two passages of the Holy Scripture, Jesus Christ is revealing unto us that any pastor who is paid to lead a local church will end up not caring about the sheep of the, local, uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ, for he will end up focusing on money. And this is why such a pastor will not hesitate to move to another local church if he's offered much more money. Hence, he does not pastor the local church because he loves the Lord Jesus Christ, but because he is paid. And this is the reason why he, can, he, he cannot make sacrifices for the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ by accepting to pastor the church without being paid and do extra work to provide for his own needs even as it was the case with the apostle paul who was doing the work of the ministry and at the same time he was making things in order to earn money to provide for his own needs even as stated in the book of acts Acts chapter 18 verse 1 to 3 which says and after these things paul departed from athens and went to corinth and he found a certain jew named aquila born in pontus who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from Rome, and he came to them. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked. But for the, by occupation, they were tent makers. In other terms, Paul was also a tent maker. So yet he was working, doing the work of the ministry, but to have money, he was making tents. And a pastor who is a hireling cannot take care of the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. Also because he may not be a true Christian, which means that he is not a citizen of the kingdom of God. The same way a mercenary is not a citizen of the country that pays him to fight in a particular war. And it's because, he's, because the hiding pastor is not a true Christian, he cannot love those who were supposed to be his fellow citizen, meaning those who were supposed to be his fellow Christian. Hence, he will not care for them. So these are therefore the role of a true pastor. He loves the Lord Jesus Christ. And because he loves the Lord Jesus Christ, he is willing to sacrifice for the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the member of the church. Whether he's paid or not, he will sometimes even use his own money to help the members of the church. Simply because he loves the Lord Jesus Christ. So he cares for the sheep of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we want to pray to say, we thank you, Heavenly Father, unchangeable God, Yahweh, thank you for equipping your church that we are with the ministry of pastor. And we ask you to help us to use this pastoral ministry with full efficiency in the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray, glorious Father, so that you restore the ministry of pastor in such a way that every Christian may understand, value, and respect the pastoral ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. And that you may thus cause that only those true Christians that you have called to be pastors to occup occupy the pastoral office in the name of Jesus Christ. We therefore ask you, blessed Father, that you cleanse your church all over the earth of every imposter in the name of Jesus Christ. May you thus remove every false pastor from the office of pastor in the name of Jesus Christ. And again, we pray, Heavenly Father, asking you to increase the love that we have for you in every single one of your pastors all over the world so that they can properly take care of your sheep, not because they are being paid, nor because of the social or financial stature of the sheep you have entrusted unto them, but simply because they love you sincerely with all their heart in the name of Jesus Christ. And so let your pastor throughout the earth spend adequate time in your presence through the daily prayers and meditation of your word so that they can receive inspiration through your Holy Spirit with 
teachings so that they can be inspired through the Holy Spirit with teachings in order for them to be well equipped to teach your sheep in the name of Jesus Christ. And moreover, let your pastor properly exercise their pastoral ministry in such a way that they can efficiently protect your sheep that you have entrusted unto them in the name of Jesus Christ. And we also pray, wonderful Father, so that you cause all your pastors to go and find all your sheep that have been lost all over the earth. All those sheep that are wandering, not having shepherd. May your pastors find them. May you also lead your pastor to find all your sheep who have been deceived and disappointed by false pastors so that you may use your pastor to heal and restore such sheep spiritually, emotionally, and physically in the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare about Father that as true Christians all over the world are fed with the appropriate diet of a sheep, meaning as they are fed with teaching that are inspired by your Holy Spirit, we thus decree that they are healthier than the people of the world and that they are ten times wiser and more intelligent than the people of the world and any agent of the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus Christ. As true Christians all over the world are fed with teaching that are inspired by the Holy Spirit, they are promoted in every aspect of their life in the name of Jesus Christ. As true Christians all over the world are fed with teaching that are inspired by your Holy Spirit, they have more than enough faith to boldly refuse to sin against you no matter the circumstances, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Yahweh, amazing Father, the only true God. Thank you for you have done it in the name of Jesus Christ. All power and all the adoration belongs to you forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.